Hi, this is Frederick Buskey from Strategic Leadership Consulting. Thanks for tuning in to this series on leading from home. We're covering five topics in this series. Routines, spaces, as in home office space, healthy practices, communications, and finally, renewal. There are three themes that go throughout this series. First is being intentional. So whatever you do, whatever choices you make about leading from home, be intentional about your choices. The second thing is limiting uh, distractions and interruptions. And the third big theme is being fully and healthily engaged in whatever you're doing. Each video supplements material that can be found on my blog at frederickbuskey.com backslash blog. And these are being released in the last week of March, first week of April 2020. So if you're going there later, you can use the archive. So I hope you subscribe to this video. Uh, this is a critical time, and as we adjust to a new normal, I'm glad that you're taking me along on your journey with you, and I hope that what you find here is valuable and helps the great work that you do. Okay, let's get started. So this video is building on the content that was in the blog about space. So there are really three, sorry, four important things to think about when we talk about space. One is that when you've got a space to go to in your home that is specifically for work, it signals to you that it's time to zero in and focus and get to work, and it signals to other people. That in turn helps limit interruptions and distractions, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, it also helps enhance your productivity and workflow because you are in a workspace. And finally, it can add to that feeling of being professional so we talked about three types of home offices. Home offices, a dedicated individual space, so that's like having a true home office where you can get in and close the door. A dedicated shared space, which means you have a place where your office is set up, uh, your desk, you've got your computer, maybe room for files or whatever it is, um, but it's in a space that's shared by other people. And then the last option, is a non-dedicated space, which means your office is where you are sitting. You plop down on the couch with your laptop, you're in the easy chair with your laptop, you're laying on the bed with your laptop, uh, wherever, wherever it is. <clears throat> that doesn't work for 99.9% .9 of us, right? Um, and so it's really, really important for you to embrace the idea of having some kind of dedicated space, even if it's shared. And you can do this in pretty cramped quarters. So we're gonna take, it, take a look at two pictures uh, from my living room, and I'll talk through those and show you, if I didn't have my dedicated office space, where I would put an office space into this common shared area in my house and you might be surprised about how small a space we can squeeze an office into. All right, let's take a look at that. So this is a picture of my dining room and living room and I just wanted to show you this so you could see where I'd set up a office in a shared space. So along this wall, there's pretty good room here actually. I could fit a small desk and set up a computer monitor on there and hang my wonderful diplomas uh, on the, wall and so that's a reasonable space i'll show you another space that would be a lot more cramped quarters and we're going to go look over here in the corner so again i've said i did i think a dedicated office space even if it's in a shared space is really really essential so my last resort if i had nowhere else to go would actually be to tuck in behind this couch I could move that lamp. I probably could squeeze about two, maybe three feet out of there and fit a small table and a chair. And it would be awkward because I'd have to walk in on the left-hand side and get behind the couch and walk in. And it, it might feel a little bit goofy and a little bit cramped, but it's still a space. And it still signals to myself and to other people. When I'm sitting here, I'm working. And when you're not working and you're sitting on the couch, then you know you're sitting on the couch, so you're creating boundaries. And I think that's really, really important to create those boundaries for yourself, both 
for the professional side of it so that people know you're working and you know you're working, but also for your mental health on the personal side of it. And back to the space that we looked at earlier, if I couldn't find a way to do a dedicated office in this shared space and there was nowhere else to permanently set up, what I would do is to set my office up each day and take it down at that dining room table. I would try to be careful and actually set my home office chair on that table in a different spot than what I would if I was eating dinner. So here we're back in the main living space and if I couldn't fit a dedicated space anywhere in here and was forced to, my last resort would be to use the dining room table and if you don't have one of those maybe you've got a kitchen table. But something where I know I'm going to have to get my stuff out each day and set it up and then probably put it away at the end of the day. But at least it's something. And so you can create kind of this temporary dedicated space and make that be your office. Sitting down, again, signals to you that you're at work and it signals to everybody else. I would actually use a different chair for my office than I would for the chair that I usually eat at. For example, I always sit in the chair furthest on the left-hand side when I eat my meals. So if I'm going to create a home office, I don't want my dinner chair to also be my home office chair. I just want to make those different uh, and kind of create, a, again, a mental reminder for myself of some boundaries. Another thing that the home office does for you is it provides signaling. So we talk about that exists really in two ways. First is visual. So when people come into the room, they see that you are at the office and so you're at work. And that's one thing that we want to teach people and it, that feeds into the routines that we talked about yesterday, but really teaching people that when I'm in this space, if you see me sitting here in my office, that's my office and I'm here and I'm working. So it signals to yourself, but it's also that visual signal to other people that you're at work. And so that's really critical. And uh, it's also important to let people know when you're entering the office. So even if they can see you, you can say, I'm going to work now, I'm heading to the office, and you go and you sit down in your office. So it's building in those kinds of routines that really let you capitalize on having the space for an office. That home office space also helps you limit distractions. So tomorrow we're going to talk about incoming distractions, otherwise known as communications. But today we'll talk a couple, but today we'll say just a couple things about interruptions within the house. So the big thing about limiting interruptions in the house is, as we've already discussed, letting people know that you're at the office and having that office signal them. And the other thing is to then declutter your space. So that can look both physical and virtual. In terms of virtual, when you sit down in your office and we want to eliminate clutter, that's all those open windows that aren't specifically work related, like news, shopping, social media, um, trips that you're thinking about doing all, well, maybe not now. <laughs> we'll take that trip later, a rain check. Um, so take all those personal browser things and the non-professional things and shut the browser down or um, at least uh, minimize it so that you're not seeing those kinds of distractions. So that's the virtual piece of it. And then physically declutter. If you've got papers all over your desk, uh, if you've got dishes and other things that right, might remind you that, oh, I've got stuff to do in the house today, oh, I got my medical bill sitting on the desk, those are things that are cluttering your mind and so you want to move those and that helps cut the distractions down a little bit. Let's talk about enhancing your home office. So we want to take an MVP approach and MVP stands for minimally viable product. If you've been forced to make a transition suddenly and and now you're in the home and you're trying to do all your regular work without all the, the resources and the, and the trappings of that, that can be a real challenge. So the number one thing is find a space, set up a table, put a chair there, and set your computer up 
and that's your office, right? That is an MVP office. It's better than being on the couch. It's better than being on the easy chair or on your bed. You've got an MVP office. And then the next phase of that is how do I enhance this office? Can I get it? Do I need to get a desk that fits my computer better? That's a little bit more ergonomic. Do I need to get a chair? Can I squeeze in a filing cabinet somewhere so I can keep all those papers handy? Um, so thinking about enhancing your home office one step at a time can be uh, helpful for your sanity. You can also think about technological enhancements. So if you're doing meetings all the time, maybe you wanna invest in a little bit better microphone. So a decent microphone can run about $50 to $100, but it can make you sound a lot better, which if you're leading from home, that can be a big boost, just sounding more professional and having a higher quality voice when you're talking to people and running meetings and that kind of thing. Um, you can invest in a better camera, and then maybe also some screen software, recording software, or uh, making sure that the technologies you're using are um, appropriate for what you're doing. So those are ways to enhance the office. And then finally, uh, professionalizing. Um, so most of us in our offices have trappings. We have diplomas, we have leadership books, we have maybe memorabilia, things that people have um, given us tokens of appreciation. When we transition to home office, we may not have those things. And it's not a huge, big thing, but I think every little step that we can take to remind us that we're at work when we're in that home office and to remind us that we're professionals and that we're leaders and people looking to us, I think those little things can be important. So if I'm in my home office and I don't have a lot of space, one, a couple things I can do are take maybe one of my favorite mementos that someone's given me about leadership and I can set that up on the side of the table. I can take three or four of my favorite leadership books and make sure that those are near me and visible. And maybe I can take my diploma for my, for my regular office and hang it above my water, monitor on the wall just to, again, remind me that I am professional, I am a leader. I think there's uh, one more thing that I want to talk about in, in this working for home um, in terms of spaces, and that's this idea of creating slivers of stillness. It's, it's in the emptiness and the quiet time in our minds that we're able to kind of um, take all the ideas and all the noise and everything that's happened and process them through and make some kind of sense of them. We've got a lot of stimulation going on in every office environment and especially then in the home office environment. And you may be jumping from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to more Zoom meetings um, and creating space to let some of those events and the things that have happened to process through is really important. And so when you're in the house working, you can create slivers of stillness for yourself so that when you get up and walk away from your office, if you're not having to interact with your kids or your partner or whoever, leave your phone at your desk. And if you're going to the bathroom or you're going to refill your water or whatever it is, just take your head and your nose out of the communications, out of the noise, and create a few minutes of stillness so that your mind can kind of sort through stuff and uh, you can calm down and maybe have some great ideas. All right, so uh, that's it for Home Office Edition. In the next video, we'll be looking at communications. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the channel if you did and you found things that were relevant for you. Um, Thursday, April 2nd, 2020, for those of you that are watching this in real time, we're gonna have a two o'clock meeting on Zoom, and that'll just be a way for leaders to come together to build some community and to kind of share and process some of the content that you've been exposed to this week. So I'd love to see you there. There's a link there you need to sign up, and there is a link in the show description. Um, I'd like to do a follow-up at some point, incorporating feedback from everybody. So please comment and share on the video. If you have questions, share your own experiences, uh, and maybe talk to me about what resonates with you or what didn't. Uh, you can learn more about my work at my website, frederickbuskey.com, and certainly feel free to email me at fbuskey at gmail.com. All right, that's it for today. Do good and be well.